G'day. Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think. I'm Graham Henderson and currently I'm escorting you through a journey of learning to factorise quadratic equations. In my last video I explained a simple method for using for finding products and sums or if you like the factors that will generate certain products and sums which we use to analyse quadratic equations. Now I'm going to use that skill here and the method I'm going to use in this video is called decomposition. Now I'm not recommending one method above another but I've got three or four videos I'm producing on different methods all working from the same logic. Some people like this method, let me explain it to you. The de decomposition method works on this basis. It says we won't initially change the 7x squared and we won't initially change the minus 3, but we are going to split this 4x up into something more convenient. And what more convenient means with this method is this. We use our PS method on the side. We multiply the coefficient of x squared by the constant, so the two outside numbers, 7 by minus 3 is minus 21 and the plus 4 underneath and if you've watched my previous video we analyze it this way we put a loop here and we say what numbers multiply to make 21 and are 4 apart or have a difference of 4 multiply to make 21 and they're 4 apart it has to be 3 and 7 you can see there's only a gap of 4 between them once we know what the numbers are, we ask ourselves, how do we get a plus 4? Well, the big number has to have the plus sign, and we have to go, if we start at plus 7, we go down 3 to get to 4. If that sounded like so much gobbledygook to you, then I encourage you to watch my previous video and understand the technique. But uh, it's just a method I have for finding these numbers, the numbers first, and then the plus and minus signs second in two separate steps. But what it does is it breaks this plus 4, this number, into two separate numbers that actually combine nicely with the outside ones. So we're going to replace the 4x with minus 3x and plus 7x. Now the order does not matter. You'll get the same result either way. So don't panic, just Whichever order they come out here, put them in. So there's our minus 3x and our plus 7x. So what, the reason this is called the decomposition method is we've decomposed the 4 into its two component parts. Now, we have four terms now. And what we do is we factorise the first two. We look for a common factor and we factorise the second two. Now in the first two, the 7 and 3 are both primes, so there's no common factor apart from 1, which is a bit redundant. But you can see we can take x out. So we'll take x out as a common factor. x times 7x is 7x squared. And x times negative 3, or minus 3, is minus 3x. And here, there is nothing to take out except for 1. So I'm going to leave this as plus 1, lot of 7x minus 3. 1 lot of 7x is 7x. 1 lot of minus 3 is minus 3. At this stage, these should be identical. And if they're not, then something's gone wrong. You've made a mistake somewhere. And you should go back and check. This is a nice way to know that you're on target. And I think that's one of the reasons some teachers like it and some students like it. Because by the if they get to this stage, they know that they're probably right. Now, if I've got x lots of this and I've got one lot of the same thing, then I've got x plus 1 lot of 7x minus 3. And that is this quadratic equation factorised using the decomposition method. Now, I will speed up a bit for these two. This one's much more difficult. You can see it's got large numbers. But let's have a look. We write the 14x squared, the minus 5, and we're going to break up the minus 33. Let's go through the process. 14 times minus 5 is minus 70 
So we've got quite a large number. Underneath it we write the minus 33. And I draw my little loop and ask the question, what numbers multiply to make 70 that are 33 apart? Now that's a long way apart. In fact, you might notice 33 is about half of what 70 is. And that's a bit of a giveaway. What is half of 70? It's 35. Well, 2 times 35 makes 70, and they're 33 apart. It wasn't as hard as it looked. Now that we've got the numbers, this is the beauty of this method that I teach students, now we can concentrate on getting the plus and minus signs. How do we get a minus 33 with these? Well, the large number has to have the same sign. And if I start at minus 35, I have to come up 2 to get to minus 33. So that's my combination. So I'm going to put it in here. Plus 2x minus 35x. And that will replace my minus 33x over here. So you can see that I've split, I've used this technique to split my minus 33 up into these two. Again, I've got four terms, so I factorise these. Now here, not only is x common, but 2 is. 2 will come out of these coefficients. So I'll take out 2x. This is 2x times 7x will give us 14x squared. 2 times 7 is 14, x times x is x squared. And 2x into 2x goes exactly once. So that was quite easy. When I come to this, they've both got a negative sign. So I'll, stick, I'll take that out as something common. The numbers both have 5 as a factor, so I'll take that out. And let's see what we get. If I take minus 5 out of this, I'm left with 7x. And if I take minus 5 out of this, I'm left with plus 1. Well, this is looking very good, isn't it? They're meant to be the same. Minus 5 times 7 is minus 35x, minus 5. All works out. So I've got 2x lots of this, minus 5 lots of the same thing. So I've got 2x minus 5, lots of the 7x plus 1. So that's quite a difficult one, but it unravels fairly quickly. Uh, you can see the beauty of knowing what to do over here. Last one. These are smaller numbers, so this should be much easier. 4x squared, leave a gap, write the minus 5, and we're going to break up this minus 1x. Well, let's do our product. 4 times minus 5 is minus 20. We have a minus 1 underneath. Draw our little loop. I just noticed all of these have a minus. Uh, that wasn't planned. So we're not going to do any where we have factors that add up to something, these all have a difference. What numbers multiply to make 20 that have a difference of 1? Or another way of avoiding it, what numbers multiply to make 20 that are 1 apart? And I think you can see it's 5 times 4, they're 1 apart. If the gap between them is very small, then you start around the square root of the number. You're wanting numbers that are very, very similar to each other. How do I get a minus 1 with a 5 and a 4? Again, the big number has the same sign. And from minus 5, I have to come up 4 to get to minus 1. So that combination can replace this minus 1 now. So instead of minus 1x, I'm going to write minus 5x plus 4x. And again, four factors. Common factor here is x. 4x minus 5. You'll perceive I have speed up. Common factor here is just plus 1, lots of 4x minus 5. You can see that looks ideal. And I hope I'm not going off the bottom of the board. I've got x lots of that and one lot of the same thing. So I've got x plus 1 lot of 4x minus 5. That is the decomposition method in all its glory. It takes a bit of space and a bit of work. But some people like it for two reasons. One. It's methodically working in complete reverse order from how we would expand this to get to this trinomial, to this quadratic. It's using a factorising process of, of looking for common terms, which is a very, very good skill to practice. So you're practising some good algebra. And about halfway along, you can actually 
kind of do a quick check to see whether you're on track and getting the right answer. So it's a quite a good method for that. Not everyone's choice, but if you like it, and I hope that's helped explain it, then please practice it and get very, very good at it. In my next video, I'll be looking at another method. Thank you for watching.